Hi there. Um, Steve Copestake from A Class Driver Training. Um, I'd quite agree with this uh, this uh, thing about ABS. I used to be in the the automotive industry. I used to do brake systems for a lot of cars, and uh, I think the statistic is that on a lot of crashes, as it. Um, thirty percent were actually involving vehicles that were fitted with ABS, and therefore it seemed that people didn't actually know what was going on underneath their foot when they felt the ABS system kick in. Um, talking about driver education, what does the panel think about actually introducing an, a, a reassessment scheme uh, for people, say every five years, actually not so much a test? but uh, uh, as an assessment on their driving skills. And if they don't uh, get up to the right standard, um, they've got to have some extra training. Um, it's certainly a long-term aim of ROSPUS to see um, regular reassessments. And the Driving Standards Agency now have a safe um, driving program for life, um, lifelong driver development. So it is almost an ultimate aim. Um, the difficulty is what should that reassessment be and how on earth do you persuade drivers um, that, they, that they would want to do it. Um, both Rossborough and um, uh, the IEM run advanced um, driver training schemes and um, while they're very good, you only get a tiny, tiny proportion of the driving population who really <coughs> are interested enough to want to, um, to do this. So it's, I think the holy grail really is finding ways of attracting people and making them see that there are benefits of taking um, this reassessment. Um, I don't see in the foreseeable future any, any prospect of um, making it a, um, a mandatory thing at all. I think that would um, create an enormous backlash. Yeah. Brian? Well, I, I would agree with that, uh, with one exception, and that is I think we could be perhaps a bit more sophisticated in our application of uh, sanctions or penalties to people who behave irresponsibly. Um, I do think personally that sometimes the law comes down perhaps excessively hard on some minor uh, motoring infractions uh, for which people might uh, more aptly get some sort of warning that if they commit an offence again, uh, something more serious will happen. Uh, but I also think that, and, I, and it, is, it is done, I know, uh, to, to a degree, that um, an element of retraining or requalification could be a part of the sanction system, so that if somebody is detected uh, committing uh, a certain type of potentially dangerous offence uh, on, uh, say, uh, two occasions or three occasions, they would have to go through a, re a, a retraining process. And that is, I think, increasingly offered as an option sometimes uh, to people who might otherwise lose their licence, etc. My simple answer to the question is, yes, I agree with you, there should be retraining. And I, came, I come to this position from two events over the, about the last five years. One only happened on Saturday. My 17-year-old daughter is learning present currently, and I tried the um, the sort of test. Um, what, what do they call it? I can't think of the name just off the top of my head. Where no, the th well, yes, the uh, theor elements yeah. of the theory tests and the uh, hazard perception. Uh, <laughs> I failed abysmally. Um, <clears throat> The other came about five years ago when my company offered voluntary retraining to staff. Um, lunchtime, certain, certain amount of hazard perception, certain amount of, amount of testing of people, uh, and the results, again, were qu quite horrifying um, when you think that people were dr driving around hundreds of miles a, a week, thousands of miles a week, and many of them don't even know the basic traffic signs, let alone any, anything that's come along in the 20 years since they passed their test. So yes, I would totally agree with a regime of re retraining. One of the conditions of my joining the Institute of Advanced Motorists was I had to take the advanced driving test and the assessment that uh, preceded that. And after 43 years of driving, I learned actually quite a lot uh, by going through that process. So I'm very much in favour of people uh, up, upping their skills. Even if they are safe drivers already, you can actually make people even better uh, than they were previously. But when you're tackling anything, you always have to look at things in terms of priorities. And one of the priorities at the moment is the 30% of casualties that are occurring by people who are actually at work, driving forward, not to and from, but actually at work. And the IAM, with other organisations, are doing training for people at work 
uh, because the casualty rate is high. And it's sometimes the management of the company, um, unrealistic expectations uh, made of people being doing deliveries who are trying to go too fast to get them uh, completed and so on, and actually just improving the skills of those people doing uh, th those journeys. They tend to be people who do high mileages and therefore they've got uh, more casualties. So w would this be a priority assessing people every five years? Well, I think you ought to put fires out where there are flames. And uh, in the first instance, the vast majority of people are driving well and compliantly. I don't see any point in wasting our resources in just retesting or reassessing those people. We should encourage them uh, to take things like the IM test or, or anything else that improves their, their standards. But to make that compulsory at the present moment, I don't think would be the best use of resources. Okay, Elizabeth. Yeah, just in answer to your question, it appears that there's a general consensus that, yes, training is a good thing, but I completely agree with David's point that it needs to be targeted because of the cost effectiveness of it. I mean, there are some really good examples of where it's been implemented around the country and very effectively. I mean, we have already the speed awareness courses that people are, are given in, instead of points, and that appears to have a much better or greater impact on people than actually having points in the studies they've done on it. Um, there's also um, a scheme which has been run by, I believe, Norfolk County Council, um, assessing older drivers, and they're doing this with Cranfield University, and actually trying to bring people in on a one-to-one -one basis and deciding whether they need some additional training, and then taking them out and helping them maintain mobility if that's appropriate, or finding them alternative solutions if it's not. So, yes, in certain areas it can be very helpful, but again, I'm not well, the foundation is convinced that wholesale, um, compulsory every you know five years or whatever would be appropriate. 